Hello all, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 1G. This is uh, mathematical kinematics. Now, uh, kinematics or the study of motion uh, can be demonstrated in a formulaic sense. Uh, you might describe these types of problems as word problems. That's how they would be presented uh, in a math class under the application section. Uh, some information is provided either with uh, verbal cues or straightforward data. And you're expected to be able to solve for one or more of the uh, kinematics variables. These types of problems typically involve the motion of an object over one uh, or more intervals of time. We're going to first look at uh, one object undergoing one motion, uh, a single interval. Uh, we'll, later on we'll extend that into multiple types of motion. So the kinematic variables that we're interested in, um, again we're familiar with position, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, we're going to make a couple of distinctions here we have x naught or x sub zero. That's the initial position of the object. We have x, which is the final position of the object. <clears throat> we have v naught or v sub zero, the initial velocity or the velocity at the beginning of the interval. We have v, which is the final velocity or the velocity at the end of the interval. We have acceleration, lowercase a, and time t. So these are the six variables that we need to describe in order to fully, uh, thoroughly describe the, the kinematics of any one object. Now, there are three formulas that you will be provided with uh, on your formula sheet. You never have to memorize these. Uh, you will probably use them enough in the next couple of weeks that you might remember them, but it's okay if you don't because they come on the formula sheet. Okay, we've got V equals V naught plus AT. X equals X naught plus V naught times T plus one half AT squared. This one is probably used most commonly. And then last we have V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A times X minus X naught. Okay, so again, these three formulas will be at your disposal uh, anytime you take a quiz or an exam. These formulas can be rearranged algebraically such that each of the kinematic variables can be solved for individually. You're going to see a table and it's going to have blanks that you'll fill in for the expressions for each of the variables listed on the left using the equations in each column heading. Okay, this is the formula. Again, we have this is the table. We have three formulas up top. And then down the left side, we have the six kinematics variables. You'll note some of these spaces are grayed out because the particular variable over here does not appear in the expression at the top. So what we want to do is rearrange each of these formulas as necessary to solve for the variable that's listed here. So we have, for example, v naught. We want to take this expression and rearrange it so that we have an expression for v naught in terms of the other three variables present. Now your instructor will have uh, completed versions of this. Uh, you can use this to practice your um, rearrangement skills, your algebra skills um, in rearranging all these formulas. The only really hard one is t for this equation here uh, because as you see this is a quadratic in t so you would need the quadratic formula to solve for t down here. So see your instructor for the completed version. Now, problem solving strategy for mathematical kinematics. Uh, first we're going to list the six kinematic variables in a tabular format. Uh, we're going to fill in the pieces of data that are uh, provided by the problem. We're going to identify which variable we need. So what do we ask for? We then look at the formulas and we decide which one we can use to solve for the variable we need in terms of the variables that we already have. Okay, that step four, this is really the physics. 
okay we're then going to substitute the data including units into the rearranged formula and then simplify the expression into a single number and a single unit for whatever variable it is we're solving for okay now sometimes the problem will provide uh, verbal clues regarding what some of the data is uh, for example if an object starts from rest uh, this implies that the initial velocity is zero so it starts from from a, a standing start the initial velocity is zero if it comes to a stop or slows down to a stop we would then determine that the final velocity is zero also if the uh, object is moving at a constant velocity um, we know that the initial and final velocities would be the same and the acceleration would be zero okay one other thing to watch for um, is that you, you may not be given any information regarding the initial position uh, if that's the case you can assume it's zero easy enough so let's look at an example uh, this is what a standard problem in uh, WebAssign would look like we have an object that starts from rest at a given initial position of 23.0 meters accelerates at 3.24 meters per second squared for 7.61 seconds now we're asked for a couple things here a what is the uh, position of the object at the end of the interval in other words what is X what is the final position we're also asked part B what is the final velocity what is V at the end of the interval so first we'll tabulate the data that we're given again we're told what X naught is we're told what a is and we're told what T is uh, we have to imply the V naught equals zero from the fact that the object starts from rest now in order to solve part a we're going to use the second formula conveniently it doesn't have to be rearranged we have X equals X naught plus V naught T plus one half a T squared we're going to put the data in here's X naught here's V naught here's T and then one half a T squared so now what we need to do is uh, simplify this somewhat complicated expression down to a single number and a single unit we can see right away this term V naught T goes away because the initial velocity is zero because it starts from rest so this term goes away now we need to simplify the rest of the expression uh, the numbers are treated just as numbers and the units are treated like algebraic variables now you'll notice right away we're going to take this 7.61 seconds and square the whole thing so the squared sign applies to everything in here we square it and get 57.91 seconds squared we multiply one half times 3.24 meters per second squared we get 1.62 meters per second squared and we multiply these two numbers we get 93.8 and then the second squared in the denominator cancels with the second squared here because we're multiplying them and we get meters as we would expect because we can't add 23 meters to a quantity that doesn't have meters when we add these up we get 116.8 meters we go around to three significant figures the third significant figure is here we round it up because of the point 0.8 we get 117 meters that is our final answer the final position at the end of the interval is 117 meters now before we move on think about which formula you would use to find the final velocity again you based on what you already have we could use either of the other two formulas first one's probably easiest V equals V naught plus AT pretty easy to solve for part B now what if the formula needs to be rearranged uh, for example we have this problem an object accelerates at 3.34 
meters per second squared over an interval of 5.35 seconds and it covers 295 meters of displacement. We want to know what the initial velocity is, V naught, V naught. Um, again, we're going to tabulate the data. We're not given any information about the initial position, so we can assume that it's zero. The final position, the, the displacement, then is 295 meters because it moves that far during the 5.35 second interval and the acceleration is 3.34 meters per second squared. Now, we need to solve for V naught. The only formula that will work is the second one because the other two formulas have both velocities in them and we have neither of those. We need to rearrange it to solve for V naught. So again, we don't know the initial or final position, but we do have the displacement, so we can assume that this is zero. Using the rearranged formula for V naught, x minus x naught over t minus at over 2. We're going to substitute the data in. Here's the x, here's x naught. Here's the time. Here's a times t over 2. Okay, again, we, we have to simplify this. So we simplify this expression first, multiply. We end up with units of meters per second, which we expect for velocity. We have to, well, subtract 0 here and then divide by 5.35. We end up with a final answer of 46.2 meters per second for the initial velocity. Now, you need to realize that every time you solve for anything, you have to show your work like we've seen here. Okay, first you show the formula that you're using in symbolic form, rearrange or not. Then you substitute the data in, including the units, every time. And then you have a simplified expression, a single number and unit for the final answer. Without the proper work, the answer itself is not any good at all. Okay, so WebAssign will show you that you're correct but you don't get any credit until you turn in your work that's done properly. Okay, and again, that's every time. So start with good habits right from the get-go, and you won't have to adjust anything later. All right, that'll do it for mathematical kinematics. Till next time, I will see you again soon.